Clovis was thought to be the first widespread culture in North America. In the past few decades, archaeologists have come to understand that a separate, contemporaneous tool tradition existed in the Great Basin. This tradition is known as the Western Stem Tradition. In this video, I flint up a Parman point, one of the styles of the Western Stem Tradition, and explore this ancient Great Basin cultural tradition. I am reducing a cobbled mallet obsidian from Idaho. Because this material is rounded, the first step of making this point is to establish a sharp edge all the way around the piece. Once one flake is removed, I can use that edge that I created as a platform to remove more material from the rounded edge. With a sharp edge around the entire piece, I can then start to thin this piece of obsidian normally by removing the high spot. When people first exited Beringia into North America, and then into the Great Basin, they would have found it a very different place than it is today. The Western Stem Tradition people occupied the basin at the end of the Pleistocene, which is marked by the end of what is called the Ice Age. The environmental conditions were different enough during this time that the Great Basin wasn't so dry and arid as it is today, but filled with wetlands and riverine systems. Western stem tradition artifacts are often found at the edges of relic wetlands or lakes, or within rock shelters and caves. The first Americans to explore the continent are still poorly understood by archaeologists. We only have a handful of sites that seem to be from these first American people. Western stem tradition sites, like Paisley Caves, are producing dates of 14,500 calibrated years before present that may demonstrate that they may have been part of this wave of first Americans. What archaeologists do know is that the Western Stem Tradition dates to around 13,000 to 8,300 calibrated years before present, contemporaneous with the Clovis Tradition, during the Paleo-Indian period. The Clovis Tradition is known for its distinctive fluted points, which are created by removing one or more distinctive large flakes from the base of the point creating a specialized hafting system. While archaeologists know that people were here in North America before Clovis, this cultural tradition is the first widespread, well-documented culture over much of the continent. However, the Western Stem tradition seems to occur at the same time as Clovis. Technologically, they are very different. Instead of fluted points, the Western Stem tradition consists of projectile point styles with contracting stems. The strategy for reducing rock into tools is also different between Clovis and the Western Stem Tradition.
there are a number of projectile point styles belonging to the western stem tradition. Most of these points have a contracting stem, although some styles are lanceolate as well. In this video, I decided to flint nap a parman point. Parman points have sharp shoulders and a base with a rounded tongue shape. The stem is straight or slightly constricted and is usually ground dull. These points were reduced from cores, spalls, and even large blades. Interestingly, most of the reduction of these projectile points was done at the toolstone quarry, with only the final shaping of the preform being done after they were transported back to camp. Western stem tradition points seem to have been made for initial use as projectile tips for hunting. After they were damaged and resharpened, becoming less viable as projectiles, they were transitioned to being used as knife blades. Obsidian and other volcanic rock seems to have been the preferred material for making western stem tradition points, although chert was used as well. This is another aspect that makes this tradition different than Clovis, which rarely made use of obsidian for projectile points. However, chert was important for making the other lithic objects that are part of the western stem tradition toolkit. Other tools that these people made include triangular end scrapers, retouched flake tools, gravers, drills, and notched tools. A poorly understood tool type associated with the western stem tradition is the crescent. These small, lunate objects are usually around 5 cm long. They are generally bifaces, although some are unifaces, made from retouched flakes. Crescents are usually made from chert almost exclusively. While there are a number of hypotheses that have been proposed for the function of crescents, archaeologists are still unsure of their purpose. Stone wasn't the only medium that western stem tradition peoples used for making their tools. Bone needles and awls have been found at a number of sites and would have been very useful for making clothing. Fish hooks made from bone have also been found. Western stem tradition points, like the parman point that I'm making, would have been hunting implements. These projectile points were probably part of an atlatl and dart system. The atlatl is a spear thrower which acts as an extension of the arm to propel a dart or spear with a greater distance, accuracy, and force than a hand thrown spear. While Clovis people focus their diet on big game hunting, it seems that western stem tradition peoples hunted and gathered a larger variety of food resources. Based on animal bones found at their sites, these people hunted bison, deer, antelope, sheep, sage grouse, rabbit, and waterfowl. Based on the presence of bone fish hooks, we know that they also sought fish as a food resource. Floral remains preserved at western stem tradition sites indicate that these people foraged for cactus pads and small seeds, including rice grass, goosefoot, 
and drop seed. Grown stone tools for processing seedy plant foods do not show up in the archaeological record in the Great Basin until the Archaic period, when people were exploiting these seeds much more intensely. Their diet seems to indicate that Western stem tradition peoples were exploiting the wide variety of food resources available to them in the wetland environment of the Great Basin during this time. To create the stem of my parmen point, I simply continue pressure flaking in the basal area along the sides. I use a narrow pressure flaker to make the shoulders of the point sharp. I remove the corners of the base and round them off to get that tongue shape. I later finish the stem by grinding it dull. Cooper's Ferry is one western stem tradition site that is the focus of intense, ongoing archaeological research. This site is located in western Idaho near the confluence of the Salmon River and Rock Creek. A western stem tradition cache at Cooper's Ferry was found within a pit feature named PFA2. A small pile of rocks cover the original surface of the pit forming a superficial cairn. The excavators interpret the features having been excavated, backfilled, and then capped off with coarse sediment and rocks so that the people who created the pit and the cache within it could find it later. Thirteen tools and hundreds of pieces of debitage were found within the pit. Four western stem tradition projectile points were found within and located at the bottom, placed rather intentionally together. Other tools found throughout the pit fill include a large uniface, three prismatic blades, two cores, two modified flakes, and a hammer stone. In addition to the stone tools, a number of animal bone fragments were also recovered, including some that had cut marks. There were other tool clusters found above the projectile points, of the various aforementioned tools and bone fragments. The researchers are unsure of the intentional nature of these additional artifact clusters, but assert that the projectile points were purposefully interred together. The projectile points found in this cache at Cooper's Ferry belong to the Lind Cowley type. These Lind Cowley points show signs of hafting and resharpening. They were manufactured from a local source of agate or chert, rather than volcanic material like obsidian. 
Most of the other tools in Debitage found are of chert, but some are of basalt and metamorphic material. There is only one other known western stem tradition cache found outside of the Cooper's Ferry site. An additional cache pit was found at Cooper's Ferry after the discovery of PFA2. This cache pit contained more western stem tradition points, and curiously enough, the skeletal remains of a wolverine. Ongoing excavations at Cooper's Ferry are producing hundreds of lithic artifacts, bone fragments, and charcoal deposits. The initial radiocarbon dates from these charcoal deposits are showing age well before Clovis, and continuing research may show a pre-Clovis component at Cooper's Ferry. The Western stem tradition demonstrates that the Paleo-Indian period is more complex than archaeologists used to think. Instead of Clovis being the only cultural tradition present in North America during this time, a contemporaneous cultural tradition existed within the Great Basin. These Western stem tradition peoples were adapted to a wetland environment that is no longer present here today. Their adaptations and technology were also distinct from those of the Clovis people, painting a more diverse picture of life in North America during this time period. Thank you. 